I've been working with Martin for a couple of years, um, um, and um, I actually was with the, the founders when they founded the company. And back in the days, they thought they would be, they would stay as a service provider, and um, they changed the strategy, and um, now we are. We're talking about a company that has a phase three asset in a biosimilar space. And as you guys know, the uh, probability of success running a phase three study in a biosimilar space is uh, completely different um, compared to uh, novel drugs. Here, we also have a company that has a commercial partner, and Stada um, might not be very familiar with you uh, guys here. Um, some might know of them, but they're in, the, um, let's say, in terms of market cap, they're as big as uh, Sobi. Um, so, so being a commercial partner in that in that size is a great achievement, and uh, Martin has done a great job um, bringing in the best commercial partner. I think they could, um, you know. Um, imagine. So um, what we'd like to know today is how does this strategy look like going forward with Stada and also with your portfolio companies and maybe you could take us through the you know um, differences by similars and novel drugs. So with that said, Martin, please. Thank you very much. <coughs> So um, <clears throat> thanks to Homan and thanks to Walter for letting us present here and also thanks to you who are brave enough to stay and listen this uh, late, so uh, thanks a lot. And I want to uh, well give an update a little bit where we stand with the development uh, and uh, also talk a little bit uh, for you who are new into experience about the company and also clearly the concepts and what differentiates biosimilars to other uh, products in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, <clears throat> but let me really let me see here. Okay, it will jump over really faster. Okay, let me uh, start with uh, what I really want you to remember out of this presentation. Uh, it's all about a product which we call Exlucane, which is our leading uh, product, and it's a biosimilar to the eye drug Lucentis, which sells for three billion euro globally today, and. Uh, there are three things you shall remember about this. This is a late stage uh, development. We are now starting the phase three trial and we're targeting a launch of the product beginning of 2022 when the patent of the originated drug expires. <clears throat> As Homan mentioned now initially, uh, from where we are now to marketing authorization in Europe and the US, uh, there's roughly 95% probability of success. And this is estimated on the basis of other biosimilar programs which have been taken into phase three and how many of those who have gone all the way to marketing authorization. So high probability of success or low risk. And the third one, <coughs> we have a strong commercialization partner in the German company Stada, uh, 10,000 employees globally, very much focused on sales and marketing of generics and also biosimilars. And together with them, we have an estimated sales potential of this product of 300 to 350 million euro, uh, out of which with the profit split we have together with them, a third would end up as income for x So 100 million euro for a company like us, that's a huge commercial upside. So these are the three key things I really want you to take away from the presentation, because x is it really constitutes the majority of the value of the company today and also will generate the majority of the value generation going forward. Uh, <clears throat> so my name is Martin, I'm the CEO since 2015 and before that I worked as an advisor to pharmaceutical and life science industry at Bain & Company. Anders Tullgren is the chairman of the board. He came in last year and he came from Bristol Myers Squibb where he led their intercontinental business, everything uh, except the Europe and the US, and he launched and commercialized biological drugs such as Optivo. So he knows this field very well. <clears throat> and then we have a couple of very experienced uh, uh, former uh, executives uh, from the pharmaceutical industry in Sweden. Amongst them, uh, Maurice, former CEO of Medivir, and also here in the audience for those of you who want to address questions to him uh, in the mingle afterwards. Then we have a pretty simple strategy. Um, we 
are going to do exactly what we now are doing with Exlucane with a further portfolio uh, of uh, biosimilars. So we want to target biological drugs where we see very limited competition from other biosimilar developers. We want to leverage our patented technolo technology platform where we have a lower cost compared to competitors in terms of producing these products. And then we want to strike deals and establish partnerships with larger pharmaceutical companies, which eventually will sell and market the products, like we've done with Stada and like we've done in China with uh, China Resource Pharmaceuticals. So this is the this is quite simple strategy we apply here. Uh, <coughs> but just take, uh, take a step back. As you probably know, there are two segments really in the pharmaceutical industry. You have the small molecules, which are produced uh, chemically, and then you have the large molecules, which are produced in living cells and they're called biologics. Now, as you know, when a patent expires uh, for a small molecule, we'll talk about generics. And it's quite easy these days to uh, uh, develop and get the approval of it for a generic with the result that uh, typically have 10 plus generic products on the market the day the patent expires. And prices go down 90% typically compared to the price of the originator day before patent expiration. Uh, of course, th there needs to be a similar thing in the biological world. Um, now, uh, for a biological drug, since it is so complex in its structure, you can never say and demonstrate in any way that you have a perfect, uh, uh, identical copy. This you can do for a small molecule, but you cannot do it for a bio biological drug. Therefore, <coughs> we talk about biosimilars. And you need to demonstrate as high similarity as possible uh, through different kind of analytical methods, but then also, of course, clinically. Um, and there are just so much higher barriers of entry when it comes to biosimilars compared to generics. Um, scientifically, technologically, financially, with the result that you see fewer biosimilars coming to market on each molecule which lose patent protection. What you've seen in the most, ex most extreme case is probably five with the Filgrastim situation. And as a result, prices go down 20 to 40 percent compared to the price of the originator uh, the day before patent expiration. So it's a, it's a field with high barriers of entry, lower competition, and actually an opportunity to make quite good margins. And that's uh, what we feel is really interesting and attractive about this segment. Also, <coughs> this is probably the fastest growing segment in the pharmaceutical industry these days. Growth expected now with 30% per year, coming five years, and it's driven by essentially uh, patent expirations, of course, of large biological drugs. 100 billion uh, euro of sales is going to be exposed uh, due to um, a patent expiration coming five years. Then there's a regulatory clarity. We now have 44 approved biosimilars in Europe, 19 in the US, and obviously, a more regulatory clarity leads to more investments into the sector and growth. And also, uh, biosimilars have been in the market in Europe since 2006, and we haven't seen a single safety issue in the usage of a biosimilar. Obviously, this gives confidence to physicians, to patients, and to payers, and they drive continuously the choice of using a biosimilar, more cost-efficient biosimilar, instead of the more expensive originated drug. So it's a strong growth, which I'm 100% sure will continue the coming years. And we believe also we have a big problem here, which we are addressing. Uh, there is a problem with accessibility uh, when it comes to biological drugs. They are so expensive that they are not accessible uh, to the large population. Uh, in the US, 40% of the pharmaceutical spending is on biological drugs, but only 2% of the population gets access to them, even in a country like the US. Um, and this is a problem in eye diseases, such as eye-related uh, um, macular degeneration, which we're going to talk more about. One million out of 18 million are getting treatment with approved biological drugs in this disease. Cancer with uh, the field of immuno-oncology, the drugs of Divo and Keytruda, some of you are probably familiar with them. Great uh, drugs and revolutionary in the treatment, but it costs one million Swedish crowns uh, per patient per year. And even if you survive cancer, probability of landing into a personal bankruptcy after that increases significantly. So, you know, this is... This is a problem. And also in the field of rheumatoid arthritis, uh, there's also great treatments available, but at very high cost. So this is what 
uh, we feel is important and this is what uh, motivates me and what motivates uh, the staff of uh, 32 people really working hard uh, to get these products we're developing to market. Um, <coughs> So XLucane is a leading product, the most important one, where we have the partner start and we're going into the phase three trial. Uh, then we uh, are working preclinically on biosimilars to uh, uh, Simsia uh, with sales of uh, 1.4 billion euro annually and Onkaspar treatment of uh, leukemia with sales of 200 million euro. And then um, Svertide, which is targeting uh, a drug called Decapeptil in the prostate cancer field. Uh, so I think we have... Um, um, good preclinical portfolio and really what we're trying to do here is target more niche opportunities where we see very limited competition from other biosimilar players. In the, in, in the area of uh, Svertide and, and Onkaspar here, um, there's actually patent has expired and we have no generic or biosimilar on the market yet. And for Simsia, uh, there's no public program uh, of a biosimilar targeting this molecule. So these are the kind of opportunities that we want to target here. Okay. Uh, but now, let's focus more on X-Lucane. Um, so really, Lucentis, the originated drug, it came to market in 2006, revolutionized the treatment for patients with several eye diseases, mainly age-related macular degeneration. And these patients uh, have a, a, a deteriorating vision. The central field of the vision is typically deteriorated. And Lucentis was a complete success in uh, being able to significantly improve the vision amongst these patients. Um, and created together with ILEA, which came later to the market, a segment uh, with annual sales of 9 billion euro. So a large uh, segment that has been created for these drugs. Um, we have 18 million um, individuals roughly um, uh, affected by these diseases globally. Five roughly in the Europe and the US, uh, out of which one million get treatment with approved drugs uh, for these diseases, ILEA and Lucentis. Uh, 700,000 uh, roughly are getting treatment with a non-approved drug, Avastin, because it's cheaper. Lucentis and Ilea typically costs uh, 50 to 100,000 Swedish crowns per patient per year. And uh, that, in combination with the restrictions in uh, reimbursements, leads to this situation that uh, there are patients that are getting treated with Avastin, it's a lower cost, but is attached with significant safety risks compared to being treated with Lucentis and Avastin. And then, uh, even in the US and Europe, a large population not getting any treatment at all. And this is, of course, much more accentuated in the rest of the world, where there's practically no reimbursement for this kind of uh, treatment. Um, and we look, when we look at this together with Stada, and uh, we're trying to form a picture of what kind of sales potential do we have here with, with X-Lucane. We have a base case, and we look at Europe and the US first, uh, where we believe that sales of uh, 300 to 350 million euro is achievable a uh, few years after launch of the product. And this is based on, on that we take 25% of this market at a price reduction of 30 to 40% compared to the originator. Um, and out of that, given that uh, with our technological platform, we will hi have high gross margins and start that they are very cost efficient in their sales and marketing model. Um, uh, we believe that we will have margins uh, of uh, 60 to 70 percent, which we then split 50-50 with Stada according to the agreement with them. So a third of this we count on being generated as annual income for Xbrain, so 100 million euro. Uh, this is a great commercial upside in this product for us. And beyond that, um, we believe that the market will expand. We've seen it in for all biological drugs which have lost patent protection and biosimilars have come in, they have expanded due to a more cost-efficient alternative coming to market. We believe it will happen here as well. Uh, we believe that we'll take market from uh, Avastin with the a lower cost product uh, approved for indication and not attached to these safety risks which Avastin is attached to. And then the rest of the world. Here I do believe that we need to come to market with a significantly lower priced product. I think we're talking about 100 to 200 euro per dose. But then I think uh, the volume potential um, is very, very large. So there's a good commercial upside in this uh, product. And um, I think we got a good deal with the Stada. Uh, it's quite simple in the structure. Uh, we got an upfront payment of 7.5 million euro when we entered the deal last year. And then uh, 
uh, we're uh, sharing the development expenses from that day and onwards, 50-50, and we're sharing the profits uh, from sales and marketing of the product. We are responsible for uh, the development up until regulatory approval, but we work very close to Stada. Uh, we have joint uh, steering group and joint project team, and we work very closely to draw upon their experience in terms of biosimilar developments. And then, of course, Stada will be responsible for sales and marketing of the product. And um, Stada is a sizable company, sales of roughly uh, 2 billion euro, uh, 10,000 employees, and uh, really focused on uh, bringing in products and licensing in products and leverage uh, the infrastructure and the sales and marketing perspective that they have. And number one to five positions across Europe. So I think we have a very good partner which also has cost in the DNA, if you will, and will be very cost efficient in terms of sales of this product, which I believe will be very important also. And um, <clears throat> one um, a reason why Stada decided to enter into this uh, deal with us and uh, to invest into Exlucane was the quality of the preclinical package. And the preclinical package consists of two main things. So uh, in vitro uh, analysis compared to the originator and then uh, an in vivo study which we did. And this is now you're looking at the in vitro uh, analytical work. So essentially we put up a panel of uh, 20, 30 analytical methods uh, in uh, discussions with the regulatory authorities in Europe, EMA and in the US FDA. Uh, we buy from the market uh, 10 or so batches of the originated product Lucentis. We produce 10 or so in commercial scale of our biosimilar x -lucane. We run them through the panel and we need to fall within with the pre-specified criteria of plus minus three standard deviation of the originated product, which we do across the full panel of analytical methods. So this is a strong, uh, strong comparative analytical package which uh, Stada uh, felt confident in and we also got good comments from the regulatory authorities from so far. We did an in vivo trial in, uh, um, in rabbits where we demonstrated similar tolerability, so no eye inflations um, uh, occurred in, in the treatment and injection with the exlucan compared to Lucentis, and a similar pharmacokinetic pattern, so the concentration of the, of, uh, the active substance, ranibizumab in this case, uh, in uh, the blood of the rabbits were similar, Exlucane compared to Lucentis, which is some kind of a measure of that uh, the API um, is degraded in a similar way, both when it comes to the originator and uh, our biosimilar Exlucane. So strong preclinical package. The startup felt comfortable uh, to put their money behind this, and we feel comfortable now when we go into the phase three trial. Um, <clears throat> and the design of this trial is pretty simple. We're recruiting 580 patients which, uh, with age-related macular degeneration. We split them in two groups. One group uh, get treatment with the originator product Lucentis, one group get treatment with uh, Exlucane, our biosimilar. And what we look at, eight weeks after initiation of treatment, uh, we look at the primary endpoint, which is essentially improvement in uh, visual acuity. Uh, and we compare it with, uh, with the originator uh, product and we need to fall within the predefined equivalence margin uh, which has been discussed and set by the regulatory authorities. Pretty simple. Then we follow the patients during 12 months um, and uh, we follow certain secondary uh, efficacy endpoints and a few safety endpoints. Uh, we have a very aggressive recruitment strategy here with 150 sites uh, signed up, um, focus on the US, Europe and, and India, a few more countries. It's really to enable um, uh, that this study shall support marketing authorization um, as widely as possible uh, across the globe. And we're working with Synos Health, which um, is one of the largest global uh, CROs, and they have long time uh, experience in the field of ophthalmology, and they know their clinics, and uh, they know which clinics to go with that recruit well. So I think we have a good setup, um, because this is an aggressive uh, is aggressive recruitment strategy we're, we're following here. We shall recruit all these patients during this year and then be able to report data on the primary endpoint from all patients Q2 next year. So it's very exciting times now. We shall have first patient in uh, uh, probably next week or the week after. So it's very, very exciting times to, to get this one started. Um, looking at our uh, peers, um, so other biosimilar developers with a biosimilar of Lucentis in a clinic. We can look at 
uh, Formicon, German developer. Um, they have um, clinical uh, asset with Lucentis biosimilar and the preclinical portfolio similar to ours. They listed in Frankfurt, uh, two and a half uh, billion Swedish crowns in market cap. Uh, we have some, something be Epis. Um, they're not listed, so we cannot have a comparison from that perspective. But they also have a Lucentis biosimilar uh, in phase three. And then X-Brain, and as uh, probably most of you know, we are listed here at Nasdaq First North, market cap fluctuating a little bit between 250 to 300 million Swedish crowns. We're the only one with the commercialization partner. It's yet not known who will be selling Formcon's product, who will be selling Samsung BioEpis product. And we believe this is a great strength as we go into the phase three trial, because now is really where the marketing starts. We're working actively towards all these 150 clinics uh, to promote our product in that group, which is very important. Okay. Uh, and our edge here really, um, um, apart from the quality of the work to bring a product to market, is our patented production technology, which leads to lower cost. And we, I believe that this will be of huge importance beyond Europe and the US, where, as I said, I think we're going to talk about the lower priced product. Okay. Uh, I think we did what we said we should do in 2018. Um, we struck the deal with CR Pharma in the beginning of the year. We struck the deal with Stada. Uh, actually, we generated 120 million Swedish crowns in license proceeds and product sales during last year. So I think we generated quite a lot of income uh, for the company. Uh, Anders Tullian joined as chairman of the board, which led to um, a strategic overview and a, st a stricter focus going forward on the biosimilars. Um, and also that the development of Exlucane went according to plan, which led to us now being able to initiate this phase three trial. Um, and looking ahead here, 2019, of course, will be a lot about recruitment and we'll report and, and to the market as we reach these milestones with regards to recruiting these 580 patients. Um, reporting the data from this trial, Q2 next year, uh, submitting marketing authorization application, approval and launch beginning of 2022. And during this time, uh, we also intend to generate value from our preclinical portfolio, take the assets Sverotide uh, into a phase three trial, tie up a European partner, and then advance the other uh, portfolio of biosimilars. Okay, to summarize, um, when it comes to Exlucane, which is the leading product, uh, late stage, we're going into the phase three trial. Um, high probability of success when we judge from historical development programs um, and strong commercialization partner in Stada with um, a sales potential of the product we judge uh, with 300 to 350 million euro out of which a third to 100 million euro shall end up as income for Xbrain. And then during this time period we will also um, generate news flow and value in our portfolio of uh, the preclinical programs. So that was the summary, so thanks a lot for for listening and now we shall open up for, for questions.